A heartfelt welcome. Welcomes to Strata Hadoop Conference. I'm Lisa Hammett, as Roger said, and I run strategy and operations for Salesforce Community Cloud. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of bringing to you three case studies. And what these represent are a perfect confluence of data science, wearables, and community cloud management. So their growth and momentum and the value that they're giving are indicative of what's happened in the market since we've hit a tipping point in the convergence of these technologies about 12 months ago. But more on that later. Let's talk about where we are right now. We're in the age of the internet of things. Everything is connected and it's speaking to me. My camera's telling me how to service it better. My thermostat is telling me how to personalize my house and my toothbrush is telling me where I missed spots and even more importantly, where my son missed spots. And so that world has given us 75 billion devices that are coming online and they're all giving off data. And now we enter into wearables. Well, as you can see from the slide, he's smiling, but look at the right hand side of the screen. That's my inbox. 36,000 unread messages. Every time I look at that, I have anxiety. And if you sent me an email in the last two years, sorry, I haven't responded, but you can see what I'm up against. So, you look at this and I'm a mild case. It's bringing about anxiety, but make no mistake about it because we're in the age of plethora and fear is in our midst. And fear is coming from a lot of sources. It's coming from fear of big brother watching. It's coming from fear that we're constantly distracted and that's rewiring our brains and circuitry. There's even fear, I learned last week, that machines are taking over people. Now to give this author who told me that credit, toll collection and teller jobs have been taken over by machines, it's true. But the source of his fear was interesting. It was something more nefarious. He cites Big Blue, beating a chess champion, and Watson beating the all-time Jeopardy champion, Ken Jennings, as the basis of this hypothesis. And you know, I told him to fear not, because the best chess champions hold multiple moves in their head at any one time. It's perfect and entirely predictable that a computer would do very well at that, because those are calculations that are just too costly to carry out by hand. And so, when you think about that, you need to be able to think about what it represents in our world. I think that we're in the age of intelligence, even amidst plethora, and I think that it's a net positive in our life. And now we have the technology that finally brings together a system of engagement. That means the device, you, and other members in the community are driving that value and highly personalizing it. These next three examples tell that story better than I ever could. The city of brotherly love is my first example. 64% of the residents of this city do not have internet access in their homes. They are solely reliant on their mobile devices to report crime and to organize the community within their neighborhoods to improve the quality of life. They're doing that. And the phone was an extension of their person. So what they've done is they've engaged in community policing and they've done it writ large. It's very successful. The results are nothing short of transformational. 70% reduction in type two crimes like car burglary and a 17% reduction in some of the worst neighborhoods in violent crime. That's what's happening in Philadelphia and it, they are innovating. Wearables is the next step, be it on the citizens to be able to monitor the activity of the neighborhood and the police officers who will use cameras on their body to keep the city safe. Next up, UCSF in my neighborhood. 
UCSF is using Fitbit data today to determine how we are at risk for Alzheimer's. The Framingham study in the 50s only had 5,000 participants, but everything we know today about heart disease is on the basis, and thankfully, because of that study. Now with UCSF having over a million participants and machines as part of this study, we can find the biomarker data around what will be our highest risk populations for Alzheimer's. This is vastly going to improve the quality of our lives and drive a personalized medicine experience for a farmer's market of research, which is available at UCSF. And then lastly, my personal favorite, what Jake uh, Wall and I have done together and Roger just commented on, the San Francisco puffer fish. This is a local clothier in San Francisco who is using the phone to take a 360 degree image of you when you're at home, when you're at the moment where you must decide what you're going to wear for an important event, be it a date, your first day at work, and sending it out to the community where the community of experts that you choose based on your preferred attributes, your demographics, your age, people who've bought like you, they're opining on what you should wear to complete that look. It's very successful. And it's driving a level of brand experience and deep engagement that extends well beyond the time that you are in the store at Artful Gentlemen. And so... Is it surprising at all that wearables is the next phase in this application? Imagine it. You're at a cocktail party. You have your wearable on. You will know if someone in close proximity to you is wearing the same dress. Now, for some people, that's a disaster. And so you can make a decision of what action you will take. You can leave the party or Artful Gentlemen can dispatch an express service to bring you something where you may be able to change. I don't know. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? But you know what? Here's what's really interesting. What's interesting is that all these examples underpin a system of engagement. And if you haven't guessed it yet, my hypothesis is it's the control point. I don't, use that term delight, I don't use that term lightly. What I mean by control point is from a technology perspective, we finally have a knowledge graph, an interest graph, driving this confluence of data science, wearables, and communities where we know to push relevant content to you from a metadata model where the relationships are known a priori. It's quite dramatic. The technology is in place to do it. But guess what? The tipping point is also behavioral because what's happening now in these systems of engagement, they're giving way to systems of intelligence because what they're doing is communities are forming based on like-minded buying patterns, beliefs, shared interest, same goals. And when you see that level of trust forming, what you start to see is something that looks like an inner tribe. And that's what these opt-in models look like around these communities. So now we have fully 24 by 7 engagement, but engagement with the people we choose. And that spans everything from a gated, trusted experience to a fully transparent one. So I pose this to you. Do you think we are just at the tip of the iceberg? We absolutely are. We're now entering into the phase where through facial recognition technology, you can walk in and out of a store. You don't have to swipe. You don't have to scan. Talk about frictionless. And let's talk about that the next time we meet. Thank you.